Hey, my name is Michael. I know how they call me Mike the Businessman. Um, I was actually born and raised in Greenville, Texas, a little country town on the outskirts of DFW. Uh, that's where I was born. Um, and then my family, we moved out to Florida. So I was there till high school, almost high school. And then my dad asked me to come back to Nigeria. So I ended up in a different continent on the other side of the world. Um, and then after high school, I came back, went to college. I went to Rutgers University, New Jersey. Um, graduated computer science and then moved out to Texas, came right back to my roots. Um, I tell people that um, Jersey raised me, but Texas paid me. I couldn't get a job in Jersey after I graduated. So I had to dip out, came to Texas and the rest was history. I think the tipping point for me was uh, corporate America, man. I got this new job at this big bank. I'm not going to mention the name. I don't want to throw nobody under the bus, but um, man, I bust my behind for two years and they promised me a raise and a promotion. Well, guess what? Promotion came. And you know how much they gave me as a raise? $2,000. That was it. After busting my behind for two years, all I got was $2,000 for my efforts. That's when I knew like, yo, this ain't for me. Um, so I think for anybody that's stuck in a nine to five and you're not happy, I think you need two things. I think you need ambition and then you need a plan. Like don't go, I do not advise that anybody just leave their job and you don't have a plan on how to make replace that income. Okay, you have to, I, I literally went, I took on two extra jobs. I was working three jobs at the same time for several months just to build up enough bread so I could start my business. So I had a plan, I had an end date in mind. So don't just leave cold turkey and expect things to work out. So that's the only thing. And then I just had that ambition. I knew what I wanted to do and I just went for it. So pretty much, yeah, if you have a dream, you got, you got a plan, go for it. White car rentals, for me, it made sense, my background, right? So I was, I was in insurance for several years. So after I graduated college, I couldn't get a job in Jersey in the computer field. I, I had a major in computer information systems. I couldn't get a job in, in tech. So I moved out to Texas. I had some buddies, man. We were young back then, man, like 19 years old. These guys are killing it, making like 100 grand at 19, 20, 21, selling auto insurance. You know what I'm saying? Like imagine going into like one of these roadside insurance agencies and you're making 100 grand. Um, and so this guy, they had houses, they had cars. So I moved out for that. And I did that for several years. And, um, after a while I opened up my own, I had three locations in the DFW Metroplex selling auto insurance. So that gave me like that background. So I know insurance in and out. And then after fast forward several years, I went back to corporate America and then in corporate America, I was doing risk management. So technology and cyber risk management. So I'm the one in charge of keeping the bad guys out. We keep the hackers out of the system. So I just put two and two together because at the end of the day, what's car rentals? I mean, the biggest thing about it is risk and insurance. Those are the two big things. You know, you have a big risk of somebody hitting your car or stealing your car. And what's going to uh, cover that risk for you? It's insurance. We transfer that risk over to insurance companies or we find other ways to kind of reduce that risk or avoid that risk. So, um, it just clicks for me. And so for me, it was a no brainer. I see other people struggling in the car rental business. For me, it just comes naturally, it comes easy. It's because I have that experience. So yeah, that's why I chose that field and I jumped right in. For me, the reason why I opted to do like luxury and exotics, to be honest with you, shoot, it makes more bread. <laughs> that's the bottom line. A lot of people do the economy cars and I'm not knocking that. I do that too. But if you want a big bag, yeah, you need to get the bigger cars because the amount of money I make in a month or two months on an economy car is what I make in a day on an exotic. So there's no comparing to. I mean, I've had people take my Lambo, take it for a month, two months. That's a big bag. You're not going to make that. You're not making 30 bands, 40 bands in a month on one car with an economy. So that's why I went for the, you know, the higher scale. And also just for thinking as a businessman, right? For competition reasons. It's a higher barrier to entry. Not everybody can jump up into owning exotics. So that's another thing too, right? To kind of protect my space versus everybody can do the economy joints. So what sets you apart? Let's, let me put it in perspective. Like when I was doing corporate, my salary plus bonus was around the 140, 150 range. I had to bust my behind doing three jobs, three corporate jobs at the same time just to earn about 300 or something thousand, 400, close to it. But then after taxes, that's like freaking barely 200, 200 and some change. But car rentals, just in the first six months of this year, we were almost at half a mil. You can't do that <laughs> doing corporate. 
Like even CEO level type cats don't do it for most of these companies. They don't make that much. So it's a no brainer for me. Car rentals all day, every day. For me, I always think about collaboration over competition. That's number one. I just feel like I don't have that scarcity mindset. Like that's always been me. If I got game, I'm giving it to everybody. All my friends eat. Matter of fact, I have a WhatsApp group with a bunch of my close buddies and I, just, I give out game. I don't mind that. We just share game. And so I take the same mindset and everything. And then specifically for me, I've got a dream with this. I'm not just doing this just to teach people how to run out a few cars. I'm thinking long term here. Like I'm in the process of working on a curriculum. I would like to see this in schools where kids that are high school kids, college kids, I'm in there teaching them where they have my curriculum, where they can learn how to start making money while in school so they don't have to work a nine to five, a full time job just to make ends meet while they're going through college. Imagine if they had cars, they could, their car that they have is just sitting at their dorm. They're not driving it. You could just rent that out. You're making a few thousand a month or a thousand a month. That's a lot of money for a college kid. Then they don't have the pressures of working, right? So I think that's, if I can get that in school, if kids can learn financial literacy, learn some hands-on business, a, a trade, a skill set that could actually help them go through college, right? And they can even carry that beyond that. For me, it's that kind of impact. That's what I'm after. And that's why I'm doing this. Yeah, so with the MTV Academy, we've got different kinds of people, right? So you got the people that, um, they didn't even know this was an opportunity available to them. I mean, a lot of people don't know about the car rental business. They think it's something that only the Hertz and enterprises can do. So they're always surprised when they, they stumble upon like my ads or my workshop, my free workshop, and they just, it blows their mind. So like for them, it's like, okay, they could take that liability, that car, that extra car they got sitting collecting dust in their garage. You mean I could take that and make some money on it? So I have a lot of those people, those first timers, right? And I also get a lot of people that, you know, they have heard about it. So there's an app out there called Turo, and it's almost like the Uber of car rentals, right? So a lot of people are using that app already, but then they're stuck maybe performing a lot of minimum wage activities on it. They're not making as much bread. So they come to me so I could teach them how to do private rentals. And, and really the main difference with private rentals is you're renting direct to customer. So now you own your own book of business. You own the data. You know, these are your own clientele. You're not building two rows clientele. And you make more money privately because there's no middleman. So for some people that excites them. So they come. I also have car, established car rental companies in my academy, and then I'm showing them how to scale what they have already. So it's different people, you know, that come, you know, to the academy and then I help them out. I even have people that just want to drive a dream car. And then they could use this as a vehicle, rent a car out one or two days a month, and then they're gone. <laughs> you know, they don't have to do all the work. They could just drive their car for free. So it appeals to them. So it's different people and I meet them where they're at. And you know, those are the type of people in the academy. I'll tell them not to invest. Scared money don't make no money. To be honest with you, right? Like, um, funny enough, you even say that I made a YouTube video about that the other day I need to post, but I always feel like if you can't make a, a minimal investment in your business and you probably shouldn't be in business, right? Like me personally, I've been, see mentorship. People don't see it. Mentorship is, is, is a way to fast track your progress, you know, like, I, for me personally, I, I always liken it to like in the Matrix. You seen the movie Matrix? You know when Neo, they, they hook that thing up to the back of his head and then all of a sudden he's like, I know karate. Yeah. That's the way I think. Like if I'm trying to go start a new business, I'm, I'm out there on Instagram. I'm out there on, on YouTube looking for a mentor, someone that's already done it and successful at it. They have receipts. I'm buying their course. I'm getting into their mentorship because I want to download that knowledge. You know, and then once I have that, I go out and execute. So I want someone that's already achieved the desired outcome that I have, and then I'm gonna follow them. Why should I? Why would I want to go through all the bumps and, and bruises of learning, figuring out a new business when I could just fast track it? So if if someone is trying to join and, and they're scared, nah, you should see that as an opportunity. I'm not like a lot of these YouTube cats out there that maybe have one or two cars in their driveway they're renting out. No, like I have an established warehouse. I do this for real, day in day out, and so. They shouldn't be scared. They should have that comfort that they're learning from someone that's already been there and achieved what they want to achieve. Yeah, so it's called the only car rental course you'll ever need. And it's called that for a reason. Like, it has everything. So in the car rental business, there's three major models, right? So there's what they call the ride sharing model. So that's when you're getting cars, like your economy cars, and you're giving these out to gig economy workers. So like your Uber drivers, your DoorDash drivers, your Lyft drivers, right? So I have a whole entire module on that with over 20 videos. Just teaching you how to do that if that's the lane you want to stick to. Um, there's people that want to learn apps like Turo. So that's car sharing. That's a car sharing um, module. 
So there's also the car sharing model, right? So that's for people that want to rent out cars to travelers or people flying into their city. Um, predominantly, the main app they use for that is an app called Turo, right? Very uh, popular out there. So I also have several videos in the course on that. But my personal favorite is private rentals, okay? And that's where the bulk and the most of the meat of the course is. So where I'm walking you guys through how to set up your private car rental business from everything from like operational setup, um, if you need rental licensing, setting up your LLC, which is very important, and setting it up the right way so you can get business funding. I'm teaching you guys my risk mitigation strategies. I'm teaching you all about insurance, um, marketing, all my marketing techniques what works for me. Um, and then I'm teaching you guys taxes, depreciation. Um, so it's a lot of stuff that's in the course that so once you go through that, you have all the knowledge you need to go out there and execute. And that's another big thing, right? My mentor, Nehemiah Davis, man, he always says information on me, execution on you. And, and I'm big on that too. Like in my academy, I hate, there's nothing I hate worse than people spend their hard earned money and they buy courses. And for some reason, they just sit on that information. They don't log in, they don't watch it. They don't do nothing. I hate that. So like my academy is mostly for people that are ready, ready to take action. Like I just want action takers in there. So once you get the information, I guarantee you the course is going to change your life. Yeah, hundred percent. So once you once you get the either the the mentorship or the course, you get added to the Facebook community. We got several hundred people in there, and all of them just exchanging game, you know. And the beauty of it too is like for me in my head in my mind, right? The way I'm looking at it, I'm forecasting is imagine having thousands of people in that group, right? And all of them are running the plays I gave, like my risk mitigation strategies, right? So like they got that on lock. They got insurance on lock. They understand all these plays, right? And we're all executing on a high level. So imagine all of us just collaborating, right? Like, hey, somebody in Miami, Miami is popping right now in the summertime. A bunch of us could send all our cars to Miami to another mentee out there that we know is also executing, right? And then I could do that without being worried because I know he's going to be implementing the stuff I gave, the stuff I told him to do, right? So that's, that's for me, that's my dream, right? Like where we have a whole network, a whole community across the country, across the world, matter of fact, because I got people in Canada, Jamaica, all over, and all of us are executing on the information. For me, that's, a, that's my dream for the community.